All right, back to Kingdom of Heaven. And here we're in the second to last of the scenarios. This one is titled The Lion of Egypt. It's going to cover, uh, I don't know which crusade it is numerically. Uh, Eighth Crusade. Uh, by the sort of standard convention where there's nine big crusades. I don't remember when that was kind of settled. Certainly in a much later period where they started numbering them as historians. Uh, within the period, crusades were called quite often. Not all of them were a big deal. And that's represented by the cards rather nicely. I haven't looked at the cards for this scenario yet, but I have looked at... Uh, well, I have obviously set it up. And what we have here is the Mamluks having, with by bars, having replaced the old uh, uh, Abayid, hopefully I guessed right with my pronunciation there, without seeing it and kind of spelling it out, I can't remember, uh, dynasty. And... Uh, Largely taking most of the territory they had, not just being in Egypt where they started, but having moved up through Damascus and Aleppo. And here, Baibars has actually seized control. In the prior scenario, Baibars was more of a power behind the throne and wasn't allowed to command as many troops. Now we have a different version of him, which has a much higher command rating. Same big battle rating. Um... As to what counts as Christian in this, uh, permanently Christian uh, player, we have Kingdom of Jerusalem, Antioch, uh, and we even have the uh, assassins here. We have Armenia involved. All of that is going to count as at war right from the very start with the Mamluks. How appropriate is that? Not terribly, but here's the thing. There aren't a lot of troops for any of these. Uh, so basically the Mamluks are able to pick their own fights. You can see we get a couple units here, a unit here, a couple units here, a couple here. Uh, if we make it to turn six and enough damage has been done, Louis the Ninth could show up again. I want to take a look at a little bit at the cards because I suspect there's going to be a card that prevents him because historically he died en route to the crusade. He actually uh, fought in Tunisia for a while and got kind of sidetracked. Um, the big hope, because turn six is quite far away, the big hope is actually the Mongols. However, historically they also had their own problems and couldn't really commit, and there may well be cards, etc. affecting that. But initially, at least, the Christians have a three on the influence for them, the Muslims only have a one, and they're never allowed to ally with them. i got to get a little marker up there in the neutral box one. This game is a little different from most of the rest, well, from any of the others that we've seen, because victory points are assessed as well as all castles are worth points. Now, this gets a little tricky. Uh, how do you rep is Jerusalem one of these castles? It is a castle. Is Karak a castle? Um, in terms of victory points, how about the Cyprus castles? How about the Armenian ones? So all castles are supposed to be worth one point each, except for those of the uh, Crusading orders the Templars and Hospitallers, the ones they originally have, and those are the Assassins. Yeah, the Assassins are going to be on the Christian side at this point because essentially the Mamluks are bringing them under their reign. So they don't have any units, but it's something they can attack. Presumably, that includes the Mongol castles if you end up at war with them. Well, that means there's a lot more points, and at the beginning of the game, and if I counted everything, I could perhaps be able to tell how many, uh, you know, how, how to treat things like Jerusalem. Uh, the Crusaders have 40 points, and the Muslims have 27. Okay. Given that, the end of the game victory 
conditions. The Muslim have to get themselves up to 41. The Christians have to hold on to 32. And this is basically a situation where unlike before where it was really fighting over the the long-term sustainable uh, cities and the castles were kind of unimportant, here Bybars has taken a campaign that focuses on destroying the military orders especially and really driving the Christians to where they have nothing, not just where they don't have the cities anymore. Um, let's see what else we have here. For our crusade, if the Muslim has 34 or more points on turn 6, the crusade is unleashed. Now, if he does not, the crusader, the, the Christian player wins without having to go into turn six and seven. So, again, it's kind of one of those, you, you got to meet this deadline as the Muslim player. All right. Uh, let me take a peek at the cards and also think about those points a little bit. And indeed, there are cards which uh, divert the crusade. Um... However, there's a compensation of victory points for that. There's cards to bring Edward of England on crusade, which he historically tinkered about here a bit. Uh, there's cards to uh, cause problems with the Mongols. Uh, they'll have problems with the Golden Horde. The Mamluk machinations uh, basically tied the Mongols' hands so they couldn't help the Christians here, or at least try to prevent the uh, Muslims from getting too powerful. So it looks like we're going to have all the kind of big events being thrown into here in some way or another. And I didn't count those points. You know, I'm not sure how important they are, but let's see. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We got 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 14 and 11 puts me at 25. That means there's two more points. To me, that sounds like these are going to be double counted the way they look at it. So Karak and Jerusalem each count the extra point for, uh, for being a castle as well as the victory points for the territory itself. And that was easily enough resolved. They're the only castles, I think, that have a point. Ah, eh, Tripoli does too. So we'll assume it's treated the same way, though, and a number of others, actually. Uh, we'll assume it's treated the same way, because it seems pretty clear that way. All right, well, I'll shuffle it and set it up and get started at some point or another. Well, the Muslims open things up with the Mamluk Alliance with the Golden Horde, trying to negate any real Mongol threat. And now there just aren't enough Mongol troops to cause a problem. Turns out the Christians didn't have or don't have uh, a diplomacy card that they could use to try to trigger the Mongols, but the Mongols are the one thing that they could really use here. Well, they still have the Armenians, which aren't too bad. Anyway, this is removed from the game. And as I move the Armenians forward to try to take Aleppo, uh, Baibars runs up. He fails to take Tripoli and has to keep moving to avoid uh, uh, an attrition roll. So he ends up getting lucky with Crack the Chevaliers where he needed, I think, a five or a six to take it. It goes along with the Hospitallers that were in it. That's kind of a big bonus. That was two victory points swinging, so now we have 29 to 38. Uh, that means he's only within six of being able to trigger that Crusade, I think. Um, This is, yeah, which gives him, you know, plenty of time to get that. Of course, he needs to get uh, 40 points to win the game, right? 41 points to win the game. So that 34 should be pretty easy. The Armenians marched down to Aleppo, laid siege to it, but Bible was charged up. And they managed to withdraw in both cases. So now they're over in Antioch with kind of actually a bigger combined force. They may actually attack at this point as their only way to really stop things with a siege going on at Gaston. The problem with the attack is the Christians are at a bit of a disadvantage, but they have a nice card, uh, a heavy cavalry charge card, which now that they have Catholic troops and not just the Armenian Orthodox troops, 
they've got a chance of getting a, a bonus on the battle roll. Of course, they've got a difficulty because Bybors has a four. Bybors probably should have marched on to Antioch uh, just to prevent that difficulty of fighting a battle while he's laying siege. Maybe he's being a little too uh, presumptuous here. And indeed, it seems he was. I was mistaken. It doesn't give a battle bonus. It doesn't give a die roll bonus. It causes two additional step losses to the enemy. That was enough to drive the. Uh, well, the Muslims took. Well, I don't remember. Some nine steps, but I. didn't actually record them correctly. Um, they think, I've got to recount this. Anyway, uh, it did some nine steps. They only, the Crusaders only took some six. Well, the Christians, and uh, so they were victorious in relieving the siege. The bigger issue is they have to be dealt with. Um, but that card helped but it didn't fix the whole issue. The Christians aren't able to face what Bybors has there, and he can pull some reinforcements out. He also has cards that will help with this. So, but it did slow things down a little bit. We'll see uh, where that goes, but I gotta count my losses again and see, make sure that I took the right amount from them. Well, look at that, that huge stack. Let's look a little closer at what's under there. 10 resistance factors. There were nine to begin with. Uh, the defender managed to increase that. The attacker managed to put a blockade on it using Corsairs. It's very hard for the Muslims to blockade coastal areas, but they had the lucky card for it. Uh, and for the first time in this game, we've seen the starvation at play. Now, there were seven Christian units there that meant three column shifts from that, and I played a three uh, a three point card in order to modify that. That adds three to the die roll. That shot it up to them losing four steps of the units. Well, they were able to eliminate four units from it, which will reduce their attrition losses as they go. But essentially, this is a way for the attacker to reduce the uh, strength within the city, but they still aren't doing anything about that resistance factor, and the city's not going to fall easily as long as that's high. This may involve something kind of weird, which is the attacker wandering away, breaking the siege, which could, of course, change the position of the diplomatic marker, which right now is in the Christians' favor because uh, of the battle they won, and then come back when the defenders are all wiped out. That feels a little funky, but I don't know, it's not too bad. And it does require more expenditure. Uh, to me, it seems like once the defenders have died off, you, you should be able to assault it at a, at a lesser value. But with 10 uh, against you, it means that the combat table is impossible. It's actually impossible. They will have to get some siege events as well to make an assault. Now, if they walk away and come back, they may not need to because it'll be at like five, right? Uh, three for, no, four if there's nothing inside of it. There's a big difference there. <laughs> well, I lied a little bit about how those numbers were obtained. Instead of, at nine is not possible for a starting value. It's uh, three for a... Uh, a city. Plus one makes it four for a port. Up to two additional. Brings it to six, seven, wait, let me see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the maximum. So I'll rearrange the points. It's back up to ten now because the Crusaders or the uh, Christians had a card to improve the defenses even further. I've got to decide if I want to play a card to try to starve them out some more. They're not big enough that they're going to get column shifts anymore, so it's just a plus to the die roll. So it becomes kind of a, uh, can I take something else? Well, taking something else is going to be hard because I've got penalties against me. 
so I may just want to do the starvation and hope to kill some of them all. And that's the end of the turn. They still got this humongous number. We still got the siege going. I want it there. Why? I'm not sure. Um, mainly because that's the only way that I can keep this huge army together. Some of it's gone into the force pool. And I've pulled other forces, say out of Cairo, into the force pool. So that I can set up a different force here at Damascus and start taking things. I have most of the army pinned down there. That's good. Uh, that might be enough to allow me to capture some easy things right now. All I have available to me here is Hug and a couple of forces that I'll have available elsewhere, which makes it a lot easier on, uh, on the Muslims to have the main force pinned down like that. So it may not be a terrible thing as long as I can keep it. I won't expend cards on it though. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, is my other leader no, he's good enough, but he can only lead four units, so he's penalized. So he's not going to get a lot of surrenders there. Uh, what may make sense is to move him to Antioch, force the uh, Christians to fight their way out, and then march Bibers out somewhere else, perhaps. That sounds a little more reasonable. We'll see. All right, I'll load this one up.